In this video, I'm gonna break down seven intermittent fasting myths and debunk each one. Let's do this. Hey Keto Camper, Ben Azadi here, certified functional health practitioner, best-selling author of three books. Here at Keto Camp, we're on a mission to educate and inspire one billion people on planet Earth. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's get into this buzzword, intermittent fasting. First and foremost, intermittent fasting is not a fad, it's a fact. It's been around for a very long time since humans have been around. So I have put together for you seven myths that are being passed around and accepted as truth, and you might have said it yourself, or you might have had a coworker or a family member speak this to you. I'm gonna give you the research behind each myth as I debunk it so you have enough information and you're well equipped to defend yourself when somebody thinks you're insane for practicing intermittent fasting. So let's get into this. The first myth out there, and I used to teach this all the time when I was a personal trainer and also the owner of a CrossFit gym, hey, we wanna eat every two to three hours so we could rev up your metabolism. Have you ever heard that before? Have you ever had a personal trainer or a coach say that to you? Maybe your current coach is saying that to you. There is no evidence that supports eating every two to three hours will rev up your metabolism. There are no benefits to it. And when I realized that the, the science does not back that up, science actually shows that there are negative consequences to eating every two to three hours. If you want to age faster than anybody you know, eat every two to three hours because that'll surely do it. Anytime you eat food and raise glucose and insulin, your body has to go through a metabolic process. It creates energy within your cells and you gotta think of it this way. The same way if I were to burn firewood in this room right here at Keto Camp HQ and there would be smoke coming out of that, that firewood in this room, your cells do the same thing. It creates cellular energy. And the more frequent you eat, the more energy it needs to be produced, meaning more smoke within your cells. So you are aging yourself faster by eating every two to three hours. You are not going to speed up your metabolism. That is a myth that has been passed around for a very long time, there is no science to back it up. There is actually science that shows it gives you negative consequences like aging faster. So that's the first myth, eating frequently boosts your metabolism. Mm -mm. Not, not so much, my friends. Okay, let's get into the second myth out there, which goes hand in hand with the first one, and that is that myth that skipping a meal will slow down your metabolism. Practicing intermittent fasting will slow down your metabolism. Is that true? Well. Let's look at a study that was done on a four-day water fast. It showed a 13% increase in the metabolism after fasting for four days with nothing but water. How is that even possible? Well, here's what happens in the body when we are in a fasted state. The body starts to pump itself with counter-regulatory hormones. These hormones run counter to insulin. So when we don't eat food, meaning we're not biting a piece of that protein bar or drinking a juice. We're keeping insulin and glucose stable at baseline. And when insulin is at baseline, these hormones that run counter to insulin, they all increase. You have cortisol, human growth hormone, glucagon, and a few others. And it's your body's way of actually pumping you full of energy so you can go out there and hunt and kill your next meal. It does not know that you have your refrigerator stock full of food or your Uber Eats app that you could press a button and have a millennial knock on your door in 30 minutes. It doesn't care about that. It doesn't know about that. So your body is going to give you energy and raise your metabolic rate, your metabolism, so you could actually go out there, hunt and kill your next meal. So you will not get a slowdown in the metabolism when you intermittent fast. Your body is very smart. It knows what to do. Let's stop passing around that myth that skipping a meal will put you in this starvation mode because that is not necessarily true. The third intermittent fasting myth is this. I will have no energy when I intermittent fast. I need food to give me energy. Well, here's the deal. Food does not give you energy. It does the complete opposite. It takes massive amounts of energy and resources and blood flow to process food, to digest food, to assimilate the macronutrients to micronutrients. And when you're not eating, when you're fasting, now you have all this energy, all these resources to crush the day, to crush the task at hand. The only reason somebody might get low energy with intermittent fasting is because they are not metabolically flexible 
yet. Meaning the body, once it gets low in glucose, does not have the flexibility to start tapping into its fat stores, so they will feel sluggish. They might feel hypoglycemic. But if you get fat adapted, which is the way I teach it in the Keto Camp Academy, and you are metabolically flexible, then your body will switch from burning sugar to burning fat, and your body will produce ketones to help you feel good. And you will actually have more energy because now you're not taking all of that energy and you are now diverting it to feeling good. So when I fast, like right now I'm in a fasted state, it almost feels like I have superpowers. And if you are practicing intermittent fasting, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. If I ever give a lecture in front of an audience or if I wanna be on top of my game, I'm gonna be in a fasted state because my body, as I mentioned, is going to pump me full of energy. It's going to raise counter-regulatory hormones. It's gonna increase something in my brain called BDNF, which stands for Brain Neurotropic Growth Factor. And what that is, essentially miracle grow for your brain. So the more BDNF you have, brain-derived neurotropic factor is the definition of it, the more creative you are, the more focused you are, the better equipped you are to deal with any problems that come your way, and you have more energy, not less. So let's put that myth to bed once and for all. The fourth myth I hear out there is, if I practice intermittent fasting, I'm gonna lose all the hard-earned muscle I just put on at the gym. Look, when I used to own a gym, a CrossFit gym here in Miami, Florida called Live Free CrossFit, I heard this all the time when I started to teach intermittent fasting. The body is so smart. We need to give it some more credit here. We're not gonna eat food and then store that as body fat so when the chips are down, we start breaking down muscle, hard-earned, expensive muscle. And the analogy that I'm about to share with you comes from Dr. Jason Fung. Saying you're gonna burn muscle when you fast, it's like saying this. You have all this firewood that you're storing up in the summer. You have hundreds and hundreds of firewood, these logs, to get ready for the cold winter month. So let's compare these logs to your body fat. Now winter rolls around, it is a freezing, ice cold winter, and you have all this firewood that you have saved up, your body fat, but instead of using the firewood, you go to your couch and chop that up and throw it into the furnace. <laughs> that makes no sense. That is actually pretty damn stupid. The body is not stupid. The body is very smart. We are designed to eat food, raise glucose and insulin, store that food as body fat, and then we don't eat food, we start pulling out that body fat. That's the way we were designed to be. To give you a perfect example here, the Guinness World Record for the longest recorded water fast was 382 days. I wrote about him in my book, The Intermittent Fasting Cheat Sheet, which you could get for free over at fastingcheatsheet.com. He went 382 days without food. His name was Angus Burberry, and he went from 450 pounds to 180 pounds. This is an extreme example to show you that the body knows what to do. We do not have to stuff a muffin in our mouth every three hours. This is why we don't die in our sleep. I would also argue this. This gentleman who went 382 days without food, he didn't put food in his mouth, but he was eating. His body was eating his body fat. Therefore, you have a choice. You could get your calories from that plate of food in front of you, or you could get it from your butts and your thighs. You choose. So you would not lose muscle because the, the body is very smart. What it will do is raise human growth hormone to preserve your muscle tissue, your a very important muscle tissue. Human growth hormone is a very potent muscle building, muscle preserving hormone. It's also fat burning, it's also anti-aging, and a study showed a 2,000% increase in human growth hormone after a 24-hour fast in men and a 1,300% increase in human growth hormone after a 24-hour fast in women. So the body knows what to do. In fact, the body will not tap into its hard-earned muscle until you reach 5% body fat or less. Okay, I just broke down four myths and I debunked it. I got three more for you. If this video has been helpful so far here on YouTube, please take a second to smash that thumbs up button and subscribe to the Keto Camp YouTube channel if you're not subscribed yet. We put out a new video just about every single day and hit that bell so you're notified when we release a brand new video. The number five myth is that your brain needs glucose to function. You gotta get a hit of glucose by eating every two to three hours just to function. Your body can easily produce glucose, not from food, but from a process called gluconeogenesis. It'll break down damaged protein and turn that into glucose to fuel the brain. And here's something else that's cool 
When you fast, your body is going to produce ketones. It'll break down fat. Your liver will then get a signal to produce ketones, meaning your brain will rely mostly on ketones and less on the glucose. The brain, which is a fatty organ, it's about 80% fat, loves ketones. It prefers fat as its primary fuel source. You could get three times the more of the efficiency from ketones than glucose. So yeah, the brain might need some glucose all the time, but that doesn't mean you have to eat that glucose. The body will manufacture it. It knows what to do. So what I talked about earlier was it takes a lot of resources to digest food. Well, it also takes blood flow away from the brain to digest food as well. So when you're fasted, now you have all those resources and the blood flow to power that brain. You also get that BDNF that I spoke about. So you will not lose brain function or have mental fog or fatigue when you fast. It'll be the complete opposite. You'll feel damn good, mentally sharp, and razor-like focus. Number six, I hear this all the time. Hey, I can't even fast. If I fast, I'm gonna feel like crap and have no energy. Well, I just broke down the myth around the energy. The reason somebody says that they're gonna feel like crap and maybe they tried it and they felt like crap, maybe it's you watching or listening right now, it's because you went into fasting too soon and your body did not have the metabolic flexibility to break down fat. That's why the way I teach it is to go 28 days, I have a 28 day keto jumpstart in my Keto Camp Academy, which is my first pillar, the ADAPT pillar, and then we pair the fasting pillar with it. Because if you go into a fast and you have developed this fasting muscle, then you'll feel like a rock star. You get all the benefits that I talk about here at Keto Camp, but if you go in too soon, you're gonna feel worse. You're not gonna get all these benefits. It's important to understand that fasting is a powerful tool the same way a chainsaw is a powerful tool. Chainsaw can get the job done or it could hurt you. You gotta know what you're doing. We wanna look at fasting as a muscle you develop. You wouldn't just be on your couch for 10 years and say, oh, I'm gonna do a CrossFit workout tomorrow. Mm -mm. It's gonna look ugly, you're not gonna get through it, and you're going to hurt yourself. Same thing with fasting. If you go into a fast having developed this muscle, then you will have more energy. You'll feel damn good. You'll get all the benefits that I talk about here at Keto Camp. I have one more to go. This is the most common one out there when it comes to intermittent fasting. And that's the myth that's being spread around saying intermittent fasting is bad for your health. It might even been your doctor who told you that or a dietitian. Here's the deal. Fasting has been around since the dawn of humankind. Do you think our ancestors crawled out of a cave and said, oh, where can I find some donuts and coffee? Where can I get some cereal? No, they had to go find their food. Our cells, all 70 trillion of the cells in our body are hardwired for the old school. It's hardwired for feast, famine, cycles. And it's been this way for hundreds of thousands of years. Look, we are so blessed. If you live in a first world country like I do here in America, we're so blessed to have food readily available to us. And we are in a constant fed state. The average American eats 17 to 21 times per day leading to obesity, leading to diabetes, leading to cancer, leading to disease. So when we mimic our ancestors and go a period of time without eating food via intermittent fasting, we're getting back to our ancestral roots that all of our DNA and our cells are hardwired to do. Intermittent fasting is our birthright. Burning fat is our birthright. So we just gotta get back and remove the interference. And right now, the interference is eating too frequently and too much. So intermittent fasting is not about cutting calories or eating less. Intermittent fasting is about eating less often, going a period of time without food. So you have your eating window and you have your fasting window. The more you could adopt this, the healthier you are going to be because the body is so smart, it'll use bad cells, bad protein, bad mitochondria and organelles for fuel during a fast via autophagy. Okay, so I hope this was helpful to you. If you'd like to get my best-selling book where I answer the top 20 questions on fasting and I back it up with science, you can get this for free over at fastingcheatsheet.com. Here on YouTube, please hit that thumbs up button if this has been helpful for you. Subscribe to the channel, share this with a friend practicing fasting or somebody who thinks you're nuts for practicing fasting. Last thing I'm gonna share with you is this. Dr. Fun talks about this a lot. Those people who say intermittent fasting is dangerous, it's gonna do this to your body, it's gonna harm you, they don't understand the research and they've never done it themselves. Those are the same people who lecture birds on how to fly. 
they're out there in the neighborhood looking at birds, yelling at these birds saying, no, that's not how you fly. You got to flap your wing this way. Ridiculous. They know nothing about it. The person who is not doing it should not interrupt the person who is doing it. So I have your back. I'd love to teach you how to put this all together in my Keto Camp Academy. I have a section for Keto for the beginners, Keto for advanced, fasting for beginners, fasting for advanced. You also get a monthly coaching call with me for about $1 per day. If you head over to ketocampacademy.com, you can learn more about that. I'd love to show you how to use these powerful ancient healing strategies so you can live a long, powerful, healthy life. It's all about looking good and feeling good. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. You'll see me on the next one.